righty, friends. Welcome to you all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride. My name is Jerry Robinson. I'm the founder here at followthemoney.com. We provide a lot of education on investing and trading, income creation, so much for our global audience. You can become a member here, followthemoney.com forward slash join. You can learn all about the great benefits of being a member here right there on our website. But we also have tons of free stuff. We have lots of free videos on our YouTube page. We have lots. Uh, we, of course, you could follow us on Twitter, uh, twitter.com forward slash FTM for follow the money FTM daily. So we've got a lot going on here and we really love helping you uh, learn how to break free financially. And in fact, that's the topic of today's podcast episode. Today, we are uh, embarking on episode number 443. The title is The Roadmap to Financial Freedom. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing upon our five levels of financial freedom. That's going to be in segment one. And then in segment two, we're going to talk a little bit about what's recently happened. You may have heard uh, that Fitch ratings downgraded uh, America's credit rating from triple A down to double A plus. And what that means, what is all that about? <laughs> We've talked about this for a long time, about how the reckless spending in Washington is going to have consequences. Well, we'll be talking about those consequences uh, in segment two. So we got a great podcast episode lined up for you. Get ready to learn how you can embark on a journey towards financial freedom. All right. So the truth is financial freedom is really within reach of anyone who is willing to put in the effort. And my wife and I are living proof. Many years ago, we were struggling financially and we were trying to figure out how to really get ahead. You know, whenever I grew up as a young, you know, as a young man, I tried to start different businesses and I just kind of, you know, failed. I, I didn't I didn't really understand how it all worked. I didn't know that you had to have quite a bit of money to make money. I it was difficult whenever I was trying to start a business and I didn't have a huge advertising budget. And, you know, whenever you're just trying to make it, oftentimes, you know, you're just gonna learn through failures. And for for me, you know, it was many years of failures trying to figure out how to crack the code, how to achieve financial freedom. And what I mean by financial freedom is not necessarily having a yacht and having a Lamborghini and all of the things that you might see on social media that are paraded about as being financially free. But in reality, what, what financial freedom meant to me was being able to produce on my own with, without having to have an eight to five grind. I wanted to be able to figure out how could I provide value in such a way where I wouldn't be dependent upon someone else to, you know, for a paycheck. And so that took a long time. It took a long time to really kind of crack that nut. And so many years ago, my wife and I were struggling financially. We began implementing a sound financial and investment strategy. And by doing that and being by, you know, being consistent with that, we were able to overcome many financial hurdles and to you know embark on this journey towards financial freedom and financial security. And we love sharing our story. Uh, it's a simple story, uh, but it's a systematic uh, strategy that we use. But we love sharing this story, and we love sharing it. You know, not only with our global audience here on the podcast, but also with our members and. It was about a decade ago, or I guess over a decade ago now, where we began laying out our step-by-step -step strategy through something we call the five levels of financial freedom. Now, you, if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you know we've been doing this since 2010, and uh, we've talked about the five levels of financial freedom numerous times over the years. And as we begin this month of August 2023, we want to uh, really kind of move into this topic of financial freedom and talk about our five levels. So over the next you know series of podcast episodes, we're going to be kind of diving in deeper into these five levels and talking about what they mean how you can use this step-by-step -step strategy in your own life. And you know, we discovered that to achieve true financial security, it's important to build a plan that can withstand any and all of life's most difficult challenges. You know, anything can happen. And therefore, the five levels that we've created here are designed in such a way to keep you prepared for anything at all and at all times. 
Put simply, we created the five levels of financial freedom to prioritize and protect the most important things in life. And you can actually go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. And there you will see the five levels of financial freedom. This completely free, it's a completely free online tutorial. It's a step-by-step process. And what I want to do today is I want to provide a basic overview of the five levels of financial freedom in this first segment. Now, we're not going to get into each one of them in, you know, in full detail. I want to save our upcoming episodes to really go deeper into these because I, I, I really want to see you achieve financial freedom, whatever that means to you. Maybe you're maybe you're in a position right now where you need, you know, to get some savings, or maybe you've got some savings, but you don't know how to invest and you're trying to figure out how to do that. Or maybe you need to you have investments but you don't feel diversified. Or maybe you have, you know, you've done pretty good. You've got some money in the bank, you've got some money in your 401k and you're trying to think of a new idea to generate more income. Or maybe you're thinking about doing some advanced investing. All of those topics are included in our five levels of financial freedom. Now, let me say at the outset, however, that one of the topics we don't talk about in the five levels uh, is the topic of debt. So if you are struggling with you know, a mountain of debt right now, which is you know, kind of a, a very common occurrence here in America, if you're listening in America and also in the West, you know, many people are you know, living underneath a, a mountain of debt. If, if that's the struggle that you're facing right now, if, if if you're saying, well, you know, I wish I had savings or I wish I had investments or I wish I had, you know, the need to diversify, but I'm still trying to get out from this mountain of debt. Well, if that's the case, then we have uh, another resource I want to point you to first before you begin, you know, moving into our five levels, because the first you know, thing you've really got to do is you've got to get a strategy to pay off that debt, especially if it's high interest debt. You know, that can just ruin your plan of trying to break free. It, it, you know, it turns into a, quite frankly, it just turns into a debt slavery kind of situation where you're just never getting ahead. So if you go to, for those of you who are struggling with debt, this podcast episode is not about debt. In fact, we've done an episode on uh, debt that I'm looking through our archives right now, episode number 341 back in 2019. It's been a while, but it's called How to Pay Off Debt Fast. And that podcast is a very powerful podcast where we share our five-step debt stacking method uh, where you can literally pay off all of your debts, A-L-L, all of them, including your mortgage, your, your, uh, your, you know, your car payments, your student loans, everything in five to nine years. It's true. You really can be debt-free within five to nine years, no matter how much debt you have, by applying some simple debt repayment techniques. And we reveal that uh, through this podcast, but we also have a webpage where you can download everything for free as well. It's followthemoney.com forward slash debt. Uh, there you can download our free PDF report. We also have a, a, a an example that you can download. It's an Excel spreadsheet that'll allow you to you know, kind of see how you could pay off your debt very quickly. And then we also have that uh, podcast episode for you right there. So it's very, very powerful. You know, Financial freedom uh, is is kind of blocked when being able to achieve it can be kind of you know blockaded by all kinds of debt. You know, debt usually comes with high interest rates. It can cause stress and anxiety, uh, and so it's one of those things that you really want to tackle. So if you're struggling with debt, this, you know, as you're listening to this episode, and you say, oh, "I need to deal with that first, Go to followthemoney.com forward slash debt. Download all of our free resources. Check out that podcast episode. That's really going to get you you know, in a place where you can have some hope uh, to conquer that debt. But now today, as I mentioned, we're not going to be spending time on debt. We're going to be talking about once you've got, you know, a debt strategy in place, once you're, you know, you're moving towards that, or maybe you don't have any debt right now, that's great. Well, what do you do as far as building your financial, you know, plan? How do you, how do you get started? Well, our five levels of financial freedom as I mentioned, are laid out entirely on our website. It's completely free. There's nothing to pay for. It's just designed to help you. And you go to followthemoney.com forward slash five levels, and you'll see the whole thing there. Let's. What I want to do is I want to provide a, a basic overview uh, of the five levels so that you can understand what it's all about. 
And then in on future episodes, we're going to drill down deeper into each of these levels so that you can really understand how the how these levels work, what the step-by-step process is so that you can achieve financial security, financial freedom earlier uh, rather than later. So it really doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you may be in your 30s listening to me, your 20s. You may be listening to me in your 50s or even in your 60s. That obviously time, uh, the more time you have, the better. But at the same time, there's never a wrong time to start being wise with your finances. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can begin this process and begin moving towards financial freedom. No matter what age you are, no matter what your situation is, uh, everybody can you know c- can move towards financial security. And we've helped so many people over the years through you know one-on-one consulting, uh, through you know, and a lot of times with our members, we just provide you know basic you know basic mentoring to help them understand how to do this. But let's let's kind of zoom out now and let's talk about these five levels of financial freedom and really what they're all about. So. The five levels are intended to be went through, you you go through these in order. So it is a chronological approach. And in level one, what we're focused upon is we're focused upon building an emergency reserve. Oftentimes people fail financially because they try to put the cart before the horse. That is, they try to walk before they can crawl. And instead of taking time to build and lay a proper financial foundation by building a sufficient emergency reserve, they often want to just skip right past all of that to the fun part of investing, so to speak, or or maybe they want to go start a business. And that's what I was telling you earlier, where I, you know, I was trying to start businesses when I was young and I didn't have any savings. I didn't have, you know, a safety net. I had debt, you know, I wasn't prepared. And so I've learned a lot through the School of Hard Knocks over over the years. And that's why I love sharing, you know, these tips and techniques with others for free because, you know, I know how much they've helped me. I mean, these are the things we've actually done in our own lives, uh, my, my wife and I, to, you know, to move towards uh, financial freedom. And so, you know, but, you know, many people claim to have financial goals, but financial goal without a plan is little more than a wish. You know, hope is not a valid economic plan. It's not a valid economic strategy. So you've got to begin somewhere. So let's begin with step one, level one of our five levels of financial freedom. And again, it's all about building an emergency reserve. So when we talk about building an emergency reserve, we're obviously talking about savings. We're talking about money. We're we're talking about beginning a systematic savings plan with the goal of saving 15% of your income each month. Now, you just basically have to begin where you are. Not everybody can immediately begin saving 15% of their income, but this 15% that you save from your paycheck is going to be the fuel that's going to fund both your savings that you're going to have, your, your, your savings reserve, but then it's also going to finance your investments. So when you think about you know your job, you think about where you work or your business or whatever you do for a living, the income that comes into your life, the question is how much of that are you keeping? And that's really your savings rate. That's your profit rate, if you will. So a profit rate is very, very important. And we're going to talk about that a lot more whenever we get into the, t- uh, you know, into level one uh, on a future episode. But you really want to ask yourself, what's my profit rate? How much am I saving from my income? And if you're not saving anything, well, then your profit rate is zero. You know, you're you're basically working for corporations, you're working for, you know, Walmart, you're working for the utility companies, you're working for your landlord, but you're not really working for yourself because at the end of the month, there's nothing to put in the bank for you. There's nothing with your name on it. It's just all the money comes in and then it immediately goes back out to, you know, all of your creditors. And so you, if that's where you are, this, you know, as you're listening to this podcast episode, that's, you know, you got to hit time out and you've got to say, look, I've got to create a profit rate here. I got to decide what I'm willing to work for and what I'm not willing to work for. And if you're working right now and you don't have any savings that you're putting away every single month intentionally, then, you know, something's got to give. So uh, the ultimate goal now is to save 15, at least, at least now 15% of your income each month. But again, you just begin where you can. Uh, the, in, in addition to thinking about savings uh, in terms of finances and in terms of money, we also want to, you know, focus upon food and water storage. You know, if, if anything has happened over the last few years, we've learned about the supply chain constraints and how they can really mess up the economy. And all it takes is for a big supply chain constraint to really kind of mess with the food availability in your area. Uh, we also have concerns about, you know, the electric grid going down. You know, what if, what if the lights go out? You know, what's your plan? 
Uh, do you have a plan in the event that something happens? Uh, and I don't even want to go, I don't want to get too dark here, but I mean, we off, often hear too about the tainting of the food supply, you know, fears of the, the water supplies being, you know, being tainted. All of these things, like they may sound like sci-fi or non, you know, they're not real, but in reality, we got to realize that America has a lot of enemies. And if you live in America, you know, there's a lot of enemies who are pretty upset, you know, about uh, about the way America is waging wars around the, the, the world and, and much of that. So you have to realize that there, there are issues uh, that you may be facing uh, uniquely uh, as an American. And so it's important for you to have a plan. And so in level one, we talk about, you know, creating a go bag, uh, that 72 hour emergency kit. We're going to dive into that deeper in level one. We talk about the importance of creating a three month food and water supply uh, so that you're able to you know, have enough food and water, not only for yourself, but also for your neighbors, you know, in the event that, uh, you know, they need it, that reserve is there for you. It's just wisdom. You know, it's wisdom to be uh, slightly prepared or a little more prepared than the average bear um, because, you know, anything can happen. Uh, and so anyway, so in level one, we talk about that. We also talk about the importance of creating a charitable giving plan. We're going to really get into that in our uh, topic on level one on our episode. So, you know, the old saying says a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Well, you got to start somewhere. And level one is where you begin in our five levels of financial freedom. Now, uh, after you have gone through level one, after you've checked off all the boxes in level one and you, you've created that charitable giving plan, you've created a go bag, you've got three months of food and water supplies, you've, you know, you've got a systematic savings plan, you're saving you know, up to 15% of your income or, or even more if possible, uh, and then, then you build at least two months of savings based upon your current gross income, then you move on to level two. Now, level two is one of my favorite levels of all because it is one of the levels that it is the level I think that most people will tend to overlook, but it's also one of the most powerful. So, you know, if you're like most Americans, you're tempted to skip this level and kind of get more to the good stuff or you know what people would call the good stuff or, you know, get to investing, but that would be a terrible mistake. So level two is all about asset income and life protection. That's what it's about. So when we talk about asset protection, we're talking about your auto insurance, your home insurance, and liability insurance, also known as an umbrella policy. When we talk about income protection, we're talking about disability in, uh, income insurance, we're talking about health insurance, and we're talking about long-term care insurance. And then when we talk about life protection, we're talking about life insurance and wills and trusts. Okay, these are huge, hugely important things to your financial freedom, to your financial security. Because if these things aren't properly structured, uh, then your whole you know, life savings could be at risk, right? Really, it really is true. And people don't like to talk about asset income and life protection too much. It's, you know, again, you, you, people would much rather talk about investing or crypto or stocks or penny stocks, or they'd rather talk about, you know, precious metals, or they'd you know, rather talk about real estate, you know, anything but talking about, you know, insurance, right? And it's understandable uh, because sometimes insurance seems like it's a, you know, it's a thing that you pay for and you're like, ah, why am I doing this? Is it really worth it? Well, in reality, if you've ever asked somebody who had good insurance and then needed it, well, yes, you'll find out. And when you need insurance, by the way, you can't go and buy it. That's how it works. So that's the whole point of insurance. So, you know, it's very, very important that you have a plan there. And what we often refer to this as is your moat. So as you build your assets, which you might compare it to, say, a castle, well, what do you want around that castle? You want a nice moat around that castle. Why did they build moats around castles in the old days? Well, because when you're building that castle, you don't want robbers and thieves to break in and steal. So the moat is designed to protect your castle. And as your castle gets larger, what happens to your moat? Well, your moat should get larger as well, right? In direct, uh, you know, in, in direct proportion to that. So, so anyway, so level two is all about asset income and life protection. And what we're going to do in that level when we hit that podcast episode uh, is we're going to talk about each of those auto, home, liability insurance, disability insurance, health insurance, long-term care insurance, life insurance, wills and trusts. We're going to give you great tips on how to think about these uh, in level two. Now you can get ahead of, of the game and go ahead and go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. And you can just go right to level two and read through, you know, each one of those has its own information that you can drill down on. But you know, we're going to cover that in an upcoming episode. So, so level two is all about asset income and life protection. It's about building that moat around the castle that you're building. Now, when we move to level three, we've 
That means we've completed level one, we've completed level two, and now we have all of the protection that we desire in place. We've constructed that moat for our financial castle, and now we move into level three. Now, when you move into level three, what level three is about, it's about building and diversifying your reserves, your financial reserves, uh, and your food and water reserves. So the goal in level three is to build a total of six months of gross income saved, right? So if you earn, say, $30,000 per year, then you want $15,000 in the bank at all times, at all times. This becomes your emergency savings reserve. This is exactly what you need in the event of an emergency. If, you know, if you lose a job or if you have, you know, if your, your roof caves in or, you know, the AC goes out or your car has, you know, it needs a new transmission, you know, all these different things, you know, you hope never happen, but they do. And, and when they do, you don't want to be whipping out the visa and then getting back into a mountain of debt, right? You want to be able to have cash to be able to take care of that right there on the spot. And what you do is you keep this six months of liquidity, the six months gross income saved that you've created, by the way, from saving that 15% every single month. You're filling up this savings pool until it gets to six months gross income saved. And that amount of money uh, always, you know, is always there. So if you use it for an emergency or for an opportunity, well, then you want to automatically replete it. So, so you want to go back and you want to fill it back up until it's full. And uh, in addition to six months of gross income saved, we also want to build our food and water supply to six months. Uh, we're going to talk about what that means. We're not talking about, you know, buying a bunch of, you know, uh, freeze dried food and, you know, stuff that you wouldn't want to eat and all of this. And uh, we have a really cool strategy about how we approach, you know, food and water supplies. But quite frankly, in our world, um, with all the things we see with climate change, all the sa all the things we see with you know wicked weather patterns, all the things that we see with you know dangerous geopolitical tensions, it just makes sense to have a plan when it comes to food and water supplies. You know, if you're if you're just kind of living hand to mouth and you 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 don't have enough, especially if you have children, you know, and you don't have enough in the house, and then something happens, that that can be dangerous. And you don't want to be the guy knocking on your neighbor's door saying, hey, I didn't prepare and I need help, right? You want to be the person who is able to help your neighbor because you did prepare. So that's what this podcast is all about, being prepared for uncertainty in the future, right? So anyway, so level three is all about building and diversifying those financial reserves. And then also, you know, I mentioned diversify, taking that six months liquidity and diversifying it to improve um, it's protection from inflation. So we talk about that in level three. All right. So now that we've gone through the first three levels, now we move into level four and level four is the fun. What I would say is the fun part. This is where we begin to move into investing. So you've already completed all the steps of level three. You've got a solid reserve of liquid savings. You've got a store of food and water. You've got you got a plan, you got your protection in place, uh, and you're ready. So now you're moving into level four. Uh, in level four, what we're going to do is we're going to begin investing broadly across various asset classes. And so what this means is, is we're going to be building and diversifying our investments. Now, you remember from level one, we talked about that systematic savings plan where you begin ideally saving at least 15% of your gross income. And by now you have six months of your monthly income saved and diversified in liquid assets that help you protect your savings from inflation. But now that you have your savings reserve, we're not going to stop saving that 15% of your income. Now, uh, in instead of just putting more money into your savings, you've already got your six months of gross savings. So what you're going to do is you're going to divert that 15% every month into investments. So once you fill up your savings bucket, which, you know, is about six months of liquid savings of your gross income, then that 15% that you save every month begins to go into a new bucket, right? You're not never going to stop saving your 15%. You're always going to be doing that or more if possible. You're going to constantly be saving money. Uh, every single time you get a check, you have a profit rate. You know, you determine your profit rate. It's up to you. Uh, but we suggest at least 15% of what you earn. Now, once you have filled up that savings bucket, now it's time to fill up the investment bucket. So we're going to start diverting that 15% of savings every month into investments. And remember, if you ever drop below your six months of liquid savings, you want to immediately stop adding new money to your investments and replenish that six months of savings and then resume adding to your investment pool once that's done. So in level four, you know, we move into the concept of investing broadly across various asset classes. So we're not just going to start putting all of our money into stocks, right? 
That's not, you know, that might be certainly one asset class that you would very likely want to own, but that's not the only asset class. Uh, you, we're not just going to put all of our money into precious metals. We're not going to put all of our money into real estate. We're not going to put all of our money into bonds. We're not going to put all of our money into, you know, crypto or whatever. You know, there's all different kinds of asset classes. We're not going to go all in with our investments on one area. Instead, we're going to invest broadly across various asset classes. Why? Because the rules of the game can change and the rules of the game are found in the IRS tax code. And so they can change the rules at any time and you need to be able to be nimble. You need to have your money spread across various asset classes. We also want to avoid overweighting in any one area. Again, we want to try to have a diversified approach to investing. And we want to also in level four, really focus upon building multiple streams of income. Now, this is a really fascinating topic, and we've done a lot of work here at followthemoney.com for our members on the topic of creating multiple streams of income. So we have a whole income university here that we created many years ago that covers 22 different income streams that you can create both now and in retirement. And in fact, we've been coming up with more. So I would imagine on our next refresh of the income university, we're going to have probably closer to 25. But it, but right now we have 22 in the income university, and each one of these have videos and they have PDF downloads. You know, it's it's like a university. I mean, we're, we're basically teaching you how to create these income streams. And you know, what we challenge our members to do, and what we challenge even you to do, just listening out there, is to create another income stream in 2023. You know, to take this year or next year, you know, and say I'm going to create another income stream in my life. You know, you could create an income stream that's more passive that doesn't require as much time. Or you could create a more active income stream that's going to require a bit more time. It's up to you. But creating more income streams is vital. It's vital for you to be able to get ahead and not be dependent upon that one single income, you know, maybe that paycheck from your employer, which, you know, uh, may show up, it may continue, but, you know, you never know. People lose their jobs all the time and you have to kind of move on. And so the thing is, is that you want to have multiple streams of income so that you're able to weather any kind of storm, you know, in life. It's so vital to have those multiple streams of income. And again, we teach a lot on that topic on our website. Um, so that's level four. Level four is where we're building and diversifying investments. Okay. So now once we've gotten through level four, we now finally move to level five and level five is where your goals are going to advance, uh, into, you know, the more advanced investing and speculative kind of activities. These would include opening or expanding your own business. This would include uh, stock and option trading strategies, which we teach a lot here. We, we have a whole course on, on swing trading. We have a course on position trading. We have a course on options trading. We have courses on crypto trading. I mean, whatever it is, we've got a lot of information here for you. Then internet and affiliate marketing, that's another powerful thing that you can do in level five. You know, that's a powerful income stream. Venture capital, you know, when you have some capital or when you have some cash on the side, you can help local businesses and get a really good cash on cash return. Uh, that's some really cool ways to help local businesses or even, you know, use crowdfunding sites to to create, uh, you know, income from venture capital. And then, of course, real estate strategies. Our members know here that real estate is my personal favorite asset class. It's it's so intuitive to me. I understand, you know, uh, bricks and mortar. You know, I, I understand the whole thing. And of course, everybody needs a place to live. And so, you know, real estate strategies is just one of my favorite when it comes to, you know, developing income streams and, and kind of advanced investing. And so, uh, you know, that's level five. And, and, and uh, you know, as I've said before, you know, many people like to start at level five. They say, well, I want to start at level five. Well, that's great, but you got to start, you got to lay your foundation. And, and that's why it's so important for, you know, for us to begin with a, with a plan and a step-by-step -step plan is exactly what we need. And that's what this is designed for. I think that anyone out there who is checking out our five levels is going to find great value. There'll be something that you'll see that'll help. You know, I've coached people over the years and many times I'll talk, I'll be talking to somebody who has, you know, a, a good amount of money. I mean, they may have plenty of assets. They got real estate, they got a 401k, they got an IRA, you know, they got a health savings account, they got money in the bank, you know, but you know, they, they have, they have nothing when it comes to, uh, you know, they have the cheapest auto insurance you've ever seen, you know? And so they're, it's like a, it's like a sitting duck. Um, if you have a lot of assets, but then you have very, very cheap, bald auto insurance, for example, I'm just using this as an example. 
well, then, you know, you could really get hit. I've seen it. I've seen it happen before, you know, to people over time. And so, you know, that can really happen. Or, you know, if you're, if you have all of these assets, but then you don't have disability insurance at work, a lot of times your local company will provide disability insurance for, you know, just pennies on the dollar. And if you don't take advantage of that and something happens, wow, I mean, your assets could be, you know, required of you or health insurance, even, you know, health insurance is another problem. Long-term care insurance. Many people save all their lives. And then only to get to the end where they need to go into a nursing home and they have to spend down all of the assets that they wanted to give to their, to their children and to their heirs. And they can't because they got to spend all that money down, you know, giving it to nursing homes. Uh, they got to give it to the government, you know, and, and the next thing you know, then, then they are, then they're on Medicaid. And so, you know, it, it's, you know, it's not, it's not that, you know, that's, that's the worst possible thing that can happen to you, but why allow that to happen to you if you can make a plan ahead of time, right? Same thing with life insurance. Many people have the Adonis complex. They think nothing's going to happen to them. And I've seen this over and over again, where, you know, sadly, where people, you know, think that they're just going to be here forever and then something happens and then their family is stuck with, you know, these problems because nobody made a plan. Uh, I'm just thinking recently of Aretha Franklin, uh, who made a lot of money, you know, and she, uh, of course, over the years, and it turned out she had two wills, you know, one, I guess, in a safe box, a safety box, and then another one in uh, in the couch they found, you know. And so w- this created all kinds of tension for the family at the worst possible time, you know, in the wake of her death. So wills and trusts and life insurance and auto insurance, all this stuff has to be properly structured. Literally just one sentence or one checkbox can mean the difference between the devastation of your finances and the protection of your finances. I mean, it really is so important. So anyway, you know, we've covered a lot uh, already in this first segment, but, you know, building and diversifying your savings and investing and also, you know, building and diversifying income streams. This is what we're all about here at Follow the Money. We want to help you in this regard. And the best thing that you can do uh, right now would be to hop onto our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels five levels and just check out the five levels of financial freedom, kind of kick through them, kind of see what it's all about. And then on the upcoming uh, podcast episodes, we're going to drill down deeper into these. We're going to begin with that level one. We're going to talk about that in more depth. So be sure to tune in to future episodes here if you're interested in this topic, because we're going to be drilling down on these topics much, much more. You know, it's also really, uh, it's also really exciting just to think about what you can achieve, you know, so even if you feel down in the dumps, maybe you're listening to this and say, no, I don't know how. I could ever break free. I mean, I I got this job that I don't like, or I have this job that I can't break free from, or I have this debt that's hanging hanging over me, you know, or or whatever. I want to encourage you. I want you to know that uh, you know I've been probably in your similar shoes, or I've known people who've been in your similar shoes, and I've seen people overcome that adversity. So remember, there is hope. But hope is not a valid financial plan. It's got to be a little more than a wish. You know, you've got to really take that first step. That's what it's all about. So thank you for uh, you know letting us speak into your life. Thank you for letting us teach you what we've learned often the hard way about achieving uh, financial freedom. We really do consider ourselves so blessed to serve you as you move at the pace of wisdom in reaching your financial goals. friends, it's Jerry Robinson here from Follow the Money Radio. You know, we just launched a very exciting live weekly webcast called Trends and Profits that I want you to be a part of. It is part of our membership. You have to be a member here at followthemoney.com to be able to enjoy this webcast. But what we do in this webcast is we provide you every week with valuable insights, uh, trend alerts, actionable investing and trading ideas. And then you also have the opportunity to get your questions answered during our member Q&A segment. Each episode of the Trends and Profits webcast, which is every single week, is thoughtfully crafted to deliver four segments that will empower you to make smart investment decisions. We begin with a news brief, helping you stay up to date with the latest market news that could impact your investment strategies. We analyze the current events and economic data and geopolitical trends to help you navigate this ever-changing market landscape. In segment two, we move into trend alerts and help you stay ahead of the curve with our trend alerts. We share our expert analysis of market trends. We identify key opportunities and potential pitfalls, and we help you discover those emerging trends so you can unlock potential profits. And then in 
In segment three of our new weekly webcast, we tackle actionable investing and trading ideas. So when you're ready to take action, this is the perfect segment for you. We present actionable ideas and strategies designed to help you capitalize on market trends from stock picks to ETF trading strategies, crypto ideas. You'll receive practical guidance to help you achieve your financial goals. And then in our fourth segment, we spend time answering your questions, which matter to us greatly. We believe in the power of community and fostering a supportive learning environment. So during our member Q&A segment of our weekly live webcast, we address your specific queries. We provide insights and offer some general advice to help you overcome any hurdles you may face in your investing or trading journey. So our brand new Trends and Profits webcast for members only, I encourage you to check it out. You've got to be a member here. Of course, you got to go to followthemoney.com forward slash join. Become a member today. Start your seven day free trial. Check it out. If you want to be a better investor, a better trader, you want good ideas delivered to you in your inbox every Every single day, follow the money. That's where you want to go. Follow the money.com forward slash join. We're here for you. We want to help you in 2023. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Welcome back to the broadcast. You're listening to Follow the Money Radio. Great to have you here. Well, in segment one, we talked about the five levels of financial freedom. I really encourage you again to go check out followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. Learn all about the step-by-step uh, -step tutorial we have right there for you, complete with videos and articles and much, much more. Uh, and we'll continue on that same line in upcoming episodes. So again, if you're interested in that topic, if you want to get your financial house in order, I would definitely be tuning in to more of these uh, podcast episodes coming up uh, in August and September. We're going to be covering that topic pretty extensively. Now, you may or may not have heard of what happened over the last few days, but we got word that after years of playing games with the public's finances, Washington received a sobering reminder that choices have consequences. It's been a decade since a leading credit rating agency has downgraded America's credit rating. But that all changed on Wednesday when Fitch Ratings downgraded America's credit rating from triple A, which is the top grade that's issued by a credit rating agency. They lowered it by one notch to AA plus, double A plus. So after years of reckless spending, after years of poor fiscal stewardship of public resources, this downgrade should not really come as a surprise. And according to the report from Fitch, which I have here in my hands, uh, there were several key drivers behind the downgrade. And let me just talk about a couple of them here. First of all, uh, the report talks about the erosion of governance. So the report points to the, quote, steady deterioration in the standards of governance over the last 20 years, including on fiscal and debt matters. And then the, uh, the report adds that, quote, repeated debt limit political standoffs and last minute resolutions have eroded confidence in fiscal management, right? So we've just really seen a lot of games and brinksmanship in Washington where they're trying to score political points by using the debt ceiling or they're, you know, just practically not even governing. They're not even really trying to fix anything. They're not even concerned about, you know, much of this. In fact, this kind of uh, approach is leading to the erosion of confidence within, you know, the ability of Washington's ability to manage the its fiscal house. So I don't think anyone can disagree with this, that there has been an erosion in governance uh, in the United States, and it's largely been due to this political polarization between the two parties. It's really been pretty disastrous. Uh, another reason why Fitch uh, you know, uh, states as, the, you know, uh, as a support for the downgrade uh, has to do with rising general government deficits. So it's no secret that Washington has to borrow more than $1 trillion every year to simply pay its current obligations. Just think about that. That's outrageous. You know, the government has to borrow $1 trillion plus every 12 months just to cover its current obligations. I mean, that's, that's insane. 
And the report that Fitch put out shows that they expect these annual deficits to continue rising due to, quote, weaker federal revenues, new spending initiatives, and a higher interest burden. In fact, I was just noticing uh, that the interest you know, payments that the government is now paying are actually topping the amount we spend on defense uh, because of the recent increase in interest rates. It's just simply astonishing that Washington still uh, doesn't have a plan, and specifically a plan for the third point here that I want to bring up from this report, and that is a lack of progress on tackling unfunded obligations. So under current laws, the uh, report points out that the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, projects that the Social Security Fund will be depleted by 2033, and the Hospital Insurance Trust Fund used to pay for benefits under Medicare Part A will be depleted by 2035. Okay, so, and there's no discussion about this. This is what's so alarming about it is that you have this, this you know, coming fiscal cliff where Social Security and Medicare are you know, going to have to be, you know, downsized in some way. Benefits will have to be uh, cut. People will have to receive a haircut on benefits at some point. But you, you can't even tell that's even a problem when you look at the Congress, they're not even talking about it. They're not even concerned about it. It wasn't even in the 2020 uh, you know, debates. It wasn't in the 2016 debates. Nobody cares. So this is it's understandable that people are looking at the United States, specifically Washington and the policymakers, and saying, you know, we're losing faith in your ability to deal with your own fiscal house, right? So these are just a few of the justifications that Fitch included to support its downgrade. Now, it's important to know a couple of things here, a couple of uh, things about this report. First of all, it's, this downgrade is not based upon new information. So it's not based upon information from 2023, 2022, 2021. There's no uh, data in here talking about what's recently happened, about how the economy is you know, sort of back on the mend in some ways and uh, and how you know earnings haven't fallen off the cliff as some might expect, and all of this. It's really it's really based upon data uh, prior to 2018, um, but you know largely that's largely what it was. And and we don't expect or believe that this particular downgrade is going to spark an immediate outflow from treasury bonds or equity markets. We don't think that it's going to cause this kind of outflow immediately. But we do believe that this downgrade serves as a legitimate warning. That should be heeded by America's fiscal policymakers. You know, for now, other leading credit agencies maintain a AAA credit rating on the U.S. But if that were to change, uh, things could get serious, and they could get serious in a hurry. In our opinion, it's only a matter of when, not if, those additional downgrades will arrive. So, without immediate draconian policy changes, America will continue to face even greater economic threats that will eventually cause foreign and domestic investors to lose faith in Washington's ability to pay its bills. Eventually, investors are going to call Washington's bluff regarding its reckless spending and lack of planning. And that's not going to be a fun day for any of us. And I talk about this uh, topic a lot in my book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation. If you want to gain a full understanding of the threats facing the United States economy over the long term, I encourage you to read my book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, specifically chapters 8 uh, and chapters 10. Uh, in that book, I lay out the fundamental flaws in America's economic and monetary system and why they could lead to disaster if common sense does not prevail. So yeah, I, when we look at this overall downgrade, again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's it's a it's a fairly, uh, you know, it's a fairly minor kind of downgrade. Uh, and there are things that the Washington can do if they are interested in trying to shore up confidence. But are they going to do that? Are policymakers going to stop putting politics first and actually think about the long term when they have no incentive to otherwise? I, I don't think so. So I think we all need to be prepared for more reckless spending ahead and for a lack of planning to continue to permeate Washington. Uh, and this is why we've often said the time for debate is over, the time to prepare is now. This is why we teach our five levels of financial freedom. This is why we teach people to get out of debt. This is why we teach people to you know, take, uh, take savings from their income and actually build savings and build investments and do what they can to protect and insulate themselves to create multiple streams of income because Washington is not going to save you. They can't even save themselves. 
very, very uh, sobering report here from Fitch. We have the link in today's uh, show notes. Right, friends. Well, that brings us to the end of today's broadcast. It sure has been an honor and privilege to be here with you. And as always, we'd like to conclude with a final word, this time taken from an ancient Chinese philosopher who said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You know, it's such a simple yet profound truth that resonates deeply in the world of personal finance. Just like embarking on a long and challenging journey, achieving financial success requires that initial leap of faith, that first step towards a better future. No, it's not always easy, but remember that every decision you make, no matter how small, has the potential to set off a ripple effect of positive change. It doesn't matter where you are right now, whether you're starting from scratch or trying to bounce back from past financial setbacks. The key is to take that one courageous step, that commitment to yourself and to your financial goals. So to all of our listeners out there, we want you to feel inspired and empowered. Remember, even the most successful individuals once stood at the starting line. They too took that single step that led them on a remarkable journey. And it's not always smooth sailing, but it's all part of the adventure. Embrace the learning experiences and remember that every mistake is a lesson that propels you forward. And also remember that it's never too late to start or too early to plan. The important thing is to take that leap, no matter how big or how small, and begin shaping your financial future. And that is just something to think about. Remember friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Until next time, keep moving forward, keep dreaming big, and always remember your journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. God bless, and we'll see you right here next time. information contained on the follow the money podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes it should not be construed as specific investment advice the views and opinions of our guests and sponsors including tom cloud are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of ftmdaily.com or robinson media group llc jerry robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products follow-up individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations past performance is not indicative of future results you should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.